Welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. I am Coach Julia, and today we are going to be doing another Q&A video. We did this last month, and I had so much fun answering all your comments, I just had to do it again. So we are going to get into some of your comments and questions. Now, if you enjoy this, I really want to encourage you to become a member on our channel. I have a new thing that I've started this spring, channel memberships, and you can find a link to that on the home page. If you go to the home page of our uh, my channel, there's one of the tabs is for memberships. You can click on there. There's a whole bunch of perks, and one of those is giving priority to those people who are members as far as answering your questions and comments. So I have gone through and pulled a few that I thought were interesting, and we are gonna get started. The first one is from Gina Triana. Uh, Gina says, oh, this is in response to my first competition. So that first competition I did, I posted that up in June, and she's responding to that. She said, very lovely. You have a lot of great innate grace and elegance in your movements. Thank you so much. Any advice for us who don't? <laughs> My nickname is spatula hands. I know exactly what you're talking about. I call them frying pan hands, and I do have some students who skate with frying pan hands or spatula hands out on the ice. And you can have great you know, skating skills, and then when you go to compete or perform, you're skating with awkward looking hands and it really can take away from the performance. So just a couple little tips I can give you off the top of my head. Okay, so frying pan hands is generally you can tell someone has frying pan hands where their hands are splayed out and their fingers are all the same level. So what I want you to do is relax your hand a little bit. Now we don't want that wrist to droop. You want your, your hand to come out from the wrist so you're creating a nice line, okay? So whatever movement you're doing with your arm goes all the way through your wrist, okay? So if you're moving your arm, you want your that movement to flow through the wrist so that you don't have a broken wrist or limp wrist. And then we wanna try to keep our fingers closer together so you can see that there's not much gap there between my fingers, okay? And then we wanna make the fingers be different levels. So you don't want them all the same like a spatula. So I think about just as a starter fingers, push your middle finger down and then bring your thumb down. So you can see that these three fingers are the same height but I took my middle finger and I lowered it and then I brought my thumb in, okay? So it creates this really pretty line. And if you practice moving your hand with that middle finger indented and your thumb in, it creates a really pretty looking hand, okay? So you move all the way through so the movement comes from the center of your back all the way through flowing all the way out through that middle finger. Okay, here is another one that was responding to when I posted that first competition program. The Questionable Kid says, beautiful program, you have a lot of natural talent. Thank you so much. One question, how do you tell if you're toe pushing the crossovers? Yes, because as I was watching that program, I was going, oh my gosh, look at all those toe pushes. It was a little bit traumatizing as a coach to look back at my skating and see all those toe pushes. So how do you tell if you're toe pushing? Let's look at a little clip from that video. So in this little clip, I'm doing some crossovers. And you can see, as I'm gonna slow it down, that I'm pushing off of the front of the toe pick. So anytime you do a forward crossover, forward stroking, you want to push off the edge. So I actually have a, an old skate here with me. So when you push, you want to be pushing off of this longer section here. Okay, so if your, your foot's forward, you don't want to push forward off of the toe pick. You want to push off the side. That means your foot has to open up and the power has to come from this side here of the crossover, not forward up off the toe pick. So anytime you're gliding forward and you push up off that toe pick to, to give yourself forward momentum, it's a toe push. Instead of turning open and pushing off of the edge, okay, that is an edge push. That is kind of the difference there between toe pushes and edge pushes. We don't wanna push with the toe. It happens sometimes when we're being, um, either when we're learning or with for just being a little casual and maybe a little bit sloppy or lazy, uh, but we really wanna try to eliminate toe pushes whenever possible. They're not very powerful 
they look bad, and it makes it a lot easier to trip on your toe picks. Okay, here is a comment from Spiteful AZ asking, why is it called a scratch spin? This is a great question. I've gotten this question from my students before as well. It really refers to the, the tracings that are left on the ice. So the scratch spin is an upright spin, and you generally spin so close to the front that the very bottom pick creates a second tracing. So you'll see the tracings of your spin, but then right next to it, a second tracing made by your toe pick. And that scratch is where the name scratch spin gets its name. This comment is from the funny Ari, A-R-I, the funny Ari, I think that's right. I'm very confused about the difference between an inside and an outside turn. Okay, this is a great question. All of the skating movements have titles, have names based on the foot they're on, the direction they're traveling, and what edge they're on. So if you are doing an inside three turn, it means you're leaning on the inside edge. Let me grab that skate again. Okay, so this is my left foot, a very old skate, left foot. So out here where the little toe is is considered the outside of the skate and this where the big toe is is considered the inside of the skate so on the bottom we have our inside edge and we have our outside edge so we lean to the little toe we're on our outside edge when we lean to the big toe we're on our inside edge and that is partly how all of our edges and turns and things are named so if you are doing a right forward outside three turn. That's going to be abbreviated as RFO3, right forward outside three turn. It means you are on your right foot, you're traveling forward, and you're leaning on that outside edge, the one by the little toe, and then you're doing a three, right forward outside three turn. So it's not referring to uh, are you turning right or left, it's not referring to uh, maybe the outer side of the rink or the inside of the rink is referring to your foot. So you're on your right foot, traveling forward, leaning on your outside edge, doing a three turn. So right forward, outside three turn. The same uh, rules apply to everything in skating. You can do a left back outside three turn and that means you're on your left foot, traveling backwards, leaning on your outside edge, so that's the, again, the side with the little toe and doing a three turn, okay? So the outside versus inside refers to whether you're leaning towards your little toes, the outside edges, or the big toes, the inside edges. Here is a question from Flying Soap. That is an amazing name. I, I feel like there must be a story behind that name. So Flying Soap, thank you for your amazing tutorials. You're welcome, thanks for watching. Just a quick question, do you close your eyes or keep them open while spinning? Oh, this is a great question. Thank you for asking. So you keep your eyes open while you're spinning. We at times can spin so fast, we really can't focus our eyes on anything. And so it's just a blur, but even that blur helps us keep orientation and keep standing upright, okay? So if you were in dance, they would teach you to spot right? But we don't have time for that in our spins. We spin so quickly on the ice, we don't have time to spot. But we still need some frame of reference for our eyes so that we know if we're facing up or down, right? So if we keep our eyes open, you can see a little, like my ring has a blue line around the top of the wall. So there's a yellow line at the bottom of the wall, a white wall, and a blue line at the top. And when I spin, I can see that blue line. It's just a blur but I can see that line and it helps me know that I'm standing up. If I shut my eyes, I'm spinning so fast, it can be extremely disorienting, and then you can end up falling over, literally tipping over in your spin because you don't have anything, because uh, your brain doesn't know what, what direction you're in. You're spinning so fast, you need that little frame of reference. So keep your eyes open, it will help you stay upright. Here is a question from 24 Karat Gold. Another great name, I love it. They say, I saw a video of Canadian skater Gabe St. Jean, St. John, 
currently performing on Voyager of the Seas and he did his spirals on the inside edge and not the outside edge, is this a common variation? Great question, absolutely, yes. Doing your spirals on your inside edge is pretty common. There are a lot of different versions of a basic spiral that you will need to learn in the course of your skating. So you start out with a right, right and left straight line spiral going forwards or backwards. So you have four different spirals right there. Right forward, right backward, left forward, left backwards in a straight line. But once you have mastered those straight line spirals, you need to learn how to do them on curves, on edges. So we just talked about inside edges and outside edges. The same thing applies to your spirals. So you're gonna wanna learn how to do a forward outside edge spiral on your right, forward outside edge spiral on your left, forward inside on your right, forward inside on your left, backward outside on your right, backward outside on your left, backward inside on your right, backward inside on your left. So you have eight different basic spirals that are just a nice solid spiral. So forward, backwards, insides, outsides, right and left, you wanna be able to uh, uh, do all of them, okay? So even though some are gonna feel harder than others, get out there, practice all eight spirals on an edge. In fact, a lot of different countries in their testing tracks, you have to show that you have accomplished all those different spirals. And then once you've accomplished those basic variations, there's catch spirals, there's all different kinds of spirals that you're gonna to wanna to do in the future that are a little bit more of a challenge. So yes, great question. Forward inside spirals are a common variation. Okay, we have time for one more question today. It is from SC Chu. The question is, is it normal that your ankles feel pressed against the boots when you do spread eagles? Mine do to the point of getting bruises sometimes. Does this mean I lace my laces, my boots too tight? Is it normal for your ankles to feel pressed against the boots when you do a spread eagle? Absolutely, it really is. Um, the better your spread eagle, the more pressure you end up on that skate. So right here, this back part that's so stiff, your ankle will end up pressed really hard against it, okay? And that can cause quite a bit of discomfort. Um, you have to sort of decide, are you gonna push through that discomfort and have an awesome spread eagle or not? So the answer to question, yes, you're gonna feel some pressure back there. It's not because you tied your skates incorrectly. It's just because you're, the angle of your leg and the angle of your skate will never quite match up because these skates are so stiff. So the solve to that, if you find you love spread eagles, you wanna do a lot of them, and you're looking to get a new pair of boots, look into a pair that has a softer back, like a, like a dance boot, has a softer back, and allow you to really have a nice pointed foot in a lot of moves. Okay, skaters, I had so much fun answering more of your questions. If you have questions for me, make sure you leave those questions in the comment section down below so I can check those out and pull them up for a future video. And of course, I encourage you to become a member on this channel. It really helps support my efforts to make awesome video content for you. There's great perks that you're gonna get to take advantage of. One of those is I always look for member comments first to answer and to pull up in videos like this. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. I look forward to reading all those comments in the section down below. If you liked it, please do give us that thumbs up. And if you haven't done so yet, then hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell down in the corner so you can see all my videos when they come out. Happy skating, and I'll see you next time.